a nice review of Sushi Go the card game, players 2 to 5, ages 8 and up. Within the contents of the game, you get to see how many cards you start out with per hand, depending on how many players there are. And I went ahead and sleeved mine, so Mayday Games Purple Edition, the standard USA size. Here is all the contents within the game. Now I'll go into how the cards actually work. Maki rolls 3, 2, 1. If you have the most Maki rolls, you get 6 points. Second most, you get 3 points. Tempura gets you 5 points, but only if you have 2 Tempura. So if you only have 1, you don't get any points. Same thing goes with Sashimi. So if you only have 1, you don't get any points. But if you have 3, you go ahead and get the full 10 points. Dumplings are a little more interesting. It depends on how many cards of dumplings you have. So if you have two, you get three. And if you have five dumplings, you go ahead and get 15 points. Wasabi is interesting as well. So you need nigiri. So the next nigiri you get, you get to multiply it by three. So if you get egg nigiri, you only get to multiply three by one. So you get three points. If you, got, if you were to get Salmon Nigiri, you get 3 times 2, and then Squid Nigiri, 3 times 3. But remember, you need to have the Wasabi first. So if you get a Nigiri before Wasabi, you only get the points for the Nigiri. So only 3 in this scenario. Chopsticks is kind of the fun one. So if you have it in your hand and you already played it face up, then on any hand afterwards, you get to choose two cards from that hand and swap it out for the chopsticks. But you, in order to do that, you have to yell out Sushi Go. As an example, if you had this in one of the upcoming hands and you wanted to take two tempura to get the full five points, or you could go ahead and get you know the two pudding and save it for the end of the round, or end of the game that is. Finally, here is dessert. So dessert, basically you want it at the end of your meal. So however many dessert you have, you total it up throughout all three rounds, and if you have the most, you get six points. If you have the least, unfortunately, you have to dock six points from your score. So let's dive into a three-player game. Everyone starts out with nine cards, and here we go. So here's what the yellow meeple has. Now, it's all about what kind of gaming strategy do you have. Do you want points right away? That you could count on or do you want to save up for the end of each round or at the end of the whole game so if you want to save for the whole game then put in is your bet but it's only six points if you want to ensure that you get points no matter what um, unfortunately there's no guarantee in what the hand that yellow meeple has currently but you could go ahead and try for your best so Obviously, you need two more sashimi in order to get to 10, or you need the most maki in order to get 6. Um, best bet for right now is hoping for another tempura so you could get that minimum of 5 points right off the bat. So after you choose a card, you put it face down and pass the rest of the hand over to the player on your left. Now let's look at the blue meeple's hand. So once again, Think of what kind of strategy you want to use, um, and you know if you want to get the most points just off the bat, or if you want to save up, save up for something else. So, if you want the most points just off the bat, you would definitely just choose that salmon nigiri and get that two points. Once again, choose your card, put it face down, and pass over to your left. The last player that we have to look at the hand is the green meeple. And so this one, it's a little bit more interesting because you have three points right off the bat with the squid nigiri. Or you could go ahead and save the sashimi, hoping for all three and get the 10 points. But let's, let's go ahead and choose the wasabi and hope that there's a nigiri coming towards us and we can multiply that nigiri by three. Now that everyone chose their card, you go ahead and Flip over the card so that everyone can see what you initially chose and what you're trying to save up for. Now that everyone showed their cards, here's another strategy to think about. is trying to block the player that you're passing your cards to. So the first round, you're passing your cards to the left. What is that player saving up for? Should I block them? Or should I worry about my own hand? 
The second round, you're passing your cards to the right. Same thing. Should I block them or should I save for my own hand? So it's very complex in that manner, but extremely fun because of the nice graphics. Uh, um, kids love it just because of the cute little graphics that they have for each of the nigiri, the dumplings, the pudding, and so forth. So a very great game and very recommendable for, um, you know, ages 8 and up and for just a really quick game usually lasts about 15 minutes and it's a nice filler game is what I like to call it. So overall I would rate this about a 3 out of 5. It's a easy game to set up, really quick, graphics are cute, it's fun to play, it's a really good filler game as well as if you ever have to kill about 10 minutes of your day. But if you want anything more intense, obviously this isn't quite the game for you.